Today we are in the Murano working on getting rid of some road noise. It almost sounds like a little brake drag. This car's got 145,000 miles on it. It's due for some wheel bearings, so we're going to start there and replace the hub assembly and see if that gets rid of our noise. Check it out. Light one pound sledge, the rubber mallet, an air impact, not completely necessary, but very handy. A wrench, you'll need some prying tools. Torque wrench is absolutely 100% necessary to do this repair correctly. Breaker bar, half inch socket wrench, three eighths with a quarter inch adapter, various extensions, 10 millimeter socket, 17 millimeter socket, 19 millimeter socket, 21. Deep well, this is for the lug nuts, 32 millimeter, a hub or bearing puller. O'Reilly's near me. Uh, it's a free rental, a little penetrating fluid. I like PV Blaster, a floor jack, a jack stand, and I like to use a bucket to rest the brake caliper on when it's off so it doesn't just dangle there. We're using Moog. I like Moog when it comes to suspension parts. Their tolerances tend to be right on. Our first step in this repair is going to be to jack up the car and remove the passenger side front wheel. For all you NASCAR Farians out there, this is a great tool for removal. It's not always the best tool to assemble. So we're going to zip the lug nuts off here with the impact. We're going to put them back on by hand. The next step in this process is to take off the brake caliper. There's a 19 millimeter bolt top and bottom. We need to address this little guy, it's the ABS sensor, it's a 10 millimeter. The next piece we're going to be addressing are one, two, and then down below three and four bolts that hold this hub assembly onto the car. take this little cotter pin out. Our next man waiver will be with this 32 millimeter socket on an impact. If you don't have a 32 millimeter impact socket, Harbor Freight has them. They're pretty cheap. Do not damage the threads on the stud here. These threads go all the way to the end. So if you have to ever beat on the end of this stud, make sure you loosen this nut and actually hit the nut. I do not even recommend doing that. To pull this hub, we're going to use the same puller that we used to get our disc brake rotor off. And we're going to pull right from the inside divot here. That's the best way to do it. on this there are three little open tabs there on the back side of this so when you're installing it one of those tabs has to line up with your ABS sensor if you look at this you can actually put this in upside down and when that happens you get hit with the rejection notice as you try and put this in on reassembly out now and it's set to 65 pounds which was the factory spec that I found. You can get a Chilton's manual or something like that from the auto parts store. You know take it out behind the barn. Don't let anybody see you reading that thing but uh, sometimes those have good information in them and sometimes they don't. 
but like I said, I prefer to get it right from the horse's mouth in a factory manual. Snug this up, and we're going to torque by hand to 92 foot-pounds. We have to do here uh, 98 foot pounds. This is a 19 millimeter for those who were wondering. Get her good and tight, good and tight. Yeah, you cheeky little monkeys thought I forgot my ABS sensor. I did not. Little 10 millimeter bolt here. basically wash, rinse, and repeat. If this is your first time watching Greg's Garage, I'd invite you to subscribe in the lower left corner of your screen. I have a few videos I do every week. On Saturday mornings, I do a vlog style chat. On Sundays, I alternate between project videos and Know Your Neighbors, where you get to know other people on YouTube who have car-related and DIY-related channels. And then the first Thursday of every month, I put out a special video and feature a project that I've been working on here in the garage. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't let your leave over. This one is made in the USA. Made in Chain. Uh-oh. This one's the China. This one's the United States. We've got a different number here, 1994 and 2824. That may be the number off the assembly line. The Moog and the part number are flip-flopped on the two parts. The finish looks pretty much the same. They appear to be the same fastener. That's good. The bearings, I'm not sure. I'm not going to open these f up far enough to read the manufacturer. The castings are the same. I would say these two parts are, are probably damn near identical. Moog is pretty good at quality control.